follow on from that regarding clean air and the effects of clean air on, on people, um, we have Simon Burke here. Simon's founded the Clean Air, founded director of Clean Air in London, and he spent more than seven years campaigning against poor air quality. Um, and he's with us tonight to update us on 2013, which was the year of air. Is, is anyone aware that this was the European Commission's year of air? No, not many people, I think, unfortunately. And also, we'll hear um, how London and the UK is faring in meeting its standards. Thanks, Simon. Thanks very much, Chris, and thank you all uh, for inviting me. Um, yes, 2013 is the European Commission's Year of Air, uh, which means that they're going to come up with a package of uh, proposals, uh, probably in early December, and Commissioner Potocznik, who's the Environment Commissioner, uh, gave us a bit of a preview of that yesterday, which I'll share with you. Um, as Ian said, we're worried about uh, particles and gases, um, and within the gases uh, component of air pollution, uh, there's really only one molecule which is regulated, um, which is nitrogen dioxide. Uh, so there are all the gases in the gaseous bit of air pollution, but there's just this one molecule uh, which is actually regulated and for which there are World Health Organization guidelines. And that's important because when the mayor and others say, oh, well, I'm not too worried about nitrogen dioxide, uh, they're trying to single out one molecule in this whole gaseous component um, uh, and we need to look at nitrogen dioxide as being an indicator of all those gases but also of the very fine particles um, which it tends to bounce back and forth between. Um, last week um, the UK published um, uh, its results for uh, 2012 and what that showed was that, broadly speaking, air pollution near the busiest roads in London uh, is twice World Health Organization guideline levels uh, and legal limits. And London, again, is the most polluted capital city in the whole of Europe for nitrogen dioxide. For the particles, some of the Eastern European cities, which are surrounded by coal-fired power stations, uh, are worse. But for the air pollution gases, um, London is the worst. So it is absolutely not right to say, you know, we're sort of in this with a whole bunch of others. We are the worst, and it's probably because of the vast number of diesel vehicles um, that we've got, 8,500 buses, 22,000 taxis, etc. Um, the government only admits to having 230,000 people in London exceeding the legal limit for nitrogen dioxide. Um, and um, that's at background locations and they steadfastly refuse to say what the number is near the busy roads that, uh, that Ian highlighted. But this nitrogen dioxide problem is not going away. Um, uh, we've actually seen the data last week showed that uh, over the last 15 years the long-running um, urban roadside um, air pollution monitors have shown no um, increase um, or reduction, uh, but importantly no reduction, in the levels of nitrogen dioxide. So this problem has been around and has been pretty static um, for about 15 years near the busy roads. And in part that's because uh, the government has, successive governments, um, uh, have failed to control diesel exhaust. So we've now got um, about 50% market share of diesel vehicles and mm -hmm. about 10% 10 years ago. Now, within Greenwich, um, uh, there's a, an app which Clean Air London has produced called the Clean Air in Cities app. And using government's own statistics, uh, to, as at today, 7.2% um, uh, of all deaths in Greenwich are attributable to long term exposure to air pollution. That's just human made air pollution. Uh, 93 deaths so far this year in population and weighting levels of the particles, which we're also concerned about about 40% above the World Health Organization guideline. So be in no doubt that this is a big uh, problem, um, air pollution. Uh, the very good news is that, uh, there are several bits of very good news, but the first bit of good news is that there are very, very powerful laws in place to protect people. They may be breached by country mile, by a factor of two, 
but actually the fact that they're breached does not give the mayor or others a carte blanche to sort of like keep breaching them. Um, the European Commission, um, uh, we're hoping, will start infraction action, um, legal action against the UK um, in the next few months. Client Earth has uh, won a case at the Supreme Court, and that's been referred to the European courts to try and enforce these laws in the UK as well as asking the European Commission to help us. Um, those laws are very, very important. You only have to find one spot which is below this legal limit of 40 uh, micrograms per cubic meter, and it cannot go above that 40 level. Uh, so in fact, last week um, uh, I submitted a 19-page letter um, of complaint to the European Commission about the move of the M4 bus lane, because guess what? Um, they removed the M4 bus lane, which Sean will object to, I'll probably object to, but um, uh, in air pollution terms, my biggest objection to it was that they made not one single effort to mitigate the shift in diesel pollution from the outside lane to the near side lane close to houses. They made no effort to mitigate the increased air pollution for um, many hundreds of people near that M4. And what I highlighted in particular is the fact that uh, there were 35 locations, 35 houses, where pollution was going from below this legal limit to above it. And that is an absolute black and white breach of European law, which is totally unacceptable, and Clean Air London has asked the European Commission to investigate. Now, people are getting the message about this. Uh, I do a lot of work, uh, you may have seen me on TV, I do a lot of radio interviews, and there is no doubt, talking to those um, uh, uh, media presenters, that the tone has shifted. People are no longer asking, is this a problem? You know, Clean Air London published um, uh, uh, details of diesel exhaust on 40,000 road links in London uh, that it had obtained from the mayor. And all the questions the media are asking are, what are we going to do about this problem? Who's going to sort it and when? And the top three solutions from Clean Air London, uh, which I told the BBC about a, a month ago, were first, we need to catch up with Berlin, which banned the oldest diesel vehicles, in fact, nearly four years ago. Um, second, we need to give taxi drivers choice. Currently, the mayor forces taxi drivers to buy one or other of two diesel vehicles. We need to allow taxi drivers to buy smaller petrol vehicles. And we need to retrofit fit filters, in effect, uh, to thousands of London buses, not just a few hundred, as, as the mayor proposes. And what you should all be asking, I would suggest, is why are you in Greenwich not getting cleaner buses which is what, for example, Putney's got by making a fuss about air pollution. Why aren't you getting it? Why aren't we getting it in central London? Um, the mayor has got really a, a very appalling track record on air pollution. And in, in particular, um, well, by the way, just cleaner London is a cross-party campaign. It's very rude about the previous government, so it's very even-handed. Uh, but the mayor um, really has faults in two areas, I would say. So I would not trust him to say that he'll do something and sort it out. Um, uh, he's pursued vanity projects um, like the, the Boris buses and things. If you look at his bicycles, um, they're hugely over-engineered. They're sort of like Rolls Royces, much more expensive than the comparable um, uh, systems that you'd see if you go to Brussels or, or somewhere like that. Um, and uh, the airline, I think um, we'd all agree, is a joke. Um, but he's also taken backward steps on key measures like um, uh, delaying phase three of the low emission zone, uh, scrapping the Western Extension of the congestion charge. You know, you cannot trust him to tackle road transport problems. Uh, the government, of course, is even worse. Um, uh, I'd characterise some, uh, some of the people, some of the senior ministers as sort of free market anarchists um, who um, wanted to make changes to the local air quality management system recently, um, which many of us have opposed which would result in the scrapping of all monitoring of local air pollution across the whole of England. It's just unbelievable what they're proposing. They don't want to have anything to do with this problem. They want to just brush it out of the carpet. Now, the last thing I'd say is that um, uh, I think um, uh, Chris said it very well. Uh, you know, it, it's lovely to sort of say, look, you know, well, let's have a, a bridge or let's have a ferry, you know, down at Gannon's Reach or where it is. Let's have sort of, you know, these lovely things and we'll sort just with a wave of a wand, sort of our problems. You know, we have the existing traffic and much more space. Well, you know, that's a nice sort of um, way to, a bit of spin. 
you know, I'm very persuaded by the evidence you'll hear from John and others that what happens is you build these things and they fill up and you end up with more traffic than you actually had to start with. So it doesn't reduce the problem, it actually makes it worse. And I think what we need is that those who are in favour of river crossings, um, and there may be a way to do them, but those who are in favour of them have to be honest about what the, how they're going to mitigate, how they will mitigate the increases in air pollution that will arrive from these <coughs> crossings. So, you know, they talk vaguely about saying, oh, well, we look at road pricing or we consider sort of, you know, low emission zones or something like that. They absolutely need to be pinned down and clear. They can't have it both ways. They can't say we'll have a river crossing and we'll deal with the problems later. They must be open and honest about how they will mitigate the additional traffic that would pour into those crossings. Uh, and if they did that and told people up and down the next five bridges into central London <coughs> that they'll all be playing tolls um, in order not to um, basically shift the traffic from a tolled bridge here to uh, non toll bridges further in, I expect there'd be a lot fewer people in favour of um, uh, new river crossings. So what we need is bold action, particularly to um, eliminate diesel exhaust from the most polluted places by 2020. That's the Clean Air in London vision. Uh, we need to get the Mayor and the other politicians uh, behind this. Uh, and I think if we do that, through a mixture of political will, behavioural change and technology, <coughs> we really can show the whole world how London can sort of lead the way as it did 60 years ago in tackling air pollution. We are the only mega city in Europe. If we can crack this problem, we really will do something special and uh, I, I really look forward to that opportunity. Thank you.